So according to our World Health Report 2006, <coughs> around 57 countries globally were identified as countries with critical shortage of health workers, that is less than 2.28 per thousand population. And mostly confined in the uh, Africa and Southeast Asian countries and few <coughs> other Caribbean countries. Now, this in the same report, it is shown that the uh, distribution of population, world population in rural and urban areas are almost same, 50-50. But if we see the distribution of nurses, only 38% of the nurses are working in rural areas and, and physicians or doctors situation is much worse. Only 24% work in rural areas, though 50% of the populations are in rural areas. So there are inequality. Now, this is the physician distributions as far as burdens of disease and health expenditure by WHO regions. And here, the circles, size of the circles represent proportion of world health expenditure. Like if you see Americas, Americas almost 50% of the world health expenditures spent in Americas, where they have only 10% of global disease burden, and they're having more than 20% of uh, global physicians. And in Europe, the same level of uh, global burden of disease, that is around 10%, but having around 32% of uh, world health expenditure, global health expenditure, with more than 35% of physicians. And uh, in contrast, Southeast Asia, where the actually the highest popular year, the number of uh, global burden of disease is around 29%. But sharing only one percent of uh, global health expenditure, and around uh, eleven percent of the physicians, of the global physicians. So there's a big gaps between uh, the regions of WHO's. Now, if we see that actually the availability of health workforce as per the latest World Health uh, Statistics. Th this is again according to WHO regions. If we see the physicians, across the region there are big discrepancies, like from Africa and Europe, around 13 times more in Europe than Africa. And even with CRO, Southeast Asia region, with Europe, it is again six times more and similar figure in nurses and midwives. So again, across the, across the WHO regions, wide gap. Again, if we see at country level, particularly I've chosen Indonesia and few neighboring countries comprising Southeast Asia and ASEAN. Again, there is also quite marked gap, particularly in, 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 with Indonesia and Singapore, it's almost 10 times and Indonesia with Vietnam, Malaysia, six times. So it is not only the WHO inter-regional, even within the region, in between countries, there's a big gaps. The same for nurses as well. Now, this is very interesting. And in 2008, there was a paper in World WHO bulletins, which actually, there's some forecasting of global shortage of physicians by in 2015. That is based on two models. One is need-based models and the demand-based model. Need-based models mostly based on the calculation of uh, physicians or doctors needed to achieve the medium de millennium development goal, MDGs and demand-based demand model that is based on the projected economic growth and increasing health expenditure, particularly paying for 
health workforce salaries. And this uh, forecasting showed that even in 2015, 45 countries in the world will remain uh, continue as uh, uh, facing shortage of physicians as per need-based model. And in demand-based model, it is 37 countries will continue with acute shortage of physicians. But again, mostly concentrated in African countries. And this is why actually those need-based and demand-based model using the, this, the shortage would remain. Now again, if I next part is global regulations or international regulations. To be very honest, there is no such international regulations for doctors. What we have, we have some like WHO global code of practice, a uh, practice on international recruitment of health personnel. We have some international declarations, some agreements, particular regional agreements, and some regional networks like medical council networks, which have some impact on actually doctor's education, doctor's future role, and also the production of doctors, and migration across countries. These are some of the guide, uh, uh, instrument we have. Like this is a global consensus on social accountability of medical schools. They have recommended some future role of doctors and as per this actually the future role is going to be changed. There will be a demand for future, particularly, sorry, particularly they will have to act more on social determinants of health and they should more act as a part of health systems, not as isolated uh, clinical service providers as such, actually. And also, they should more interact with the community as a primary stakeholders. And also, they should, there should be some periodic performance evaluation. They cannot be un, unquestionable, like we have some in m many countries. Those are the things, actually, will need to be changed in futures. And second part is global, WHO global code of practice for international recruitment of health personnel, which have been endorsed by World Health Assembly's 2010. And some of the natures and guiding principles of that code is number one is, it is absolutely voluntary. So if any country does not follow this, nothing to do. And second is, this code is provide an ethical principle applicable to international recruitment of health personnel, mostly right-based approaches. And also, it also emphasized that the member states should take into account the uh, rights of the highest attainable <coughs> standard of the health of the population of source country from where the physicians are moving or migrating. And also, individual right of the health of workers who are moving. That uh, World Health Resolutions, it has emphasized that the health personnel, when they will be recruited, we should consider that the equitable balance of interest of health workers, source countries, and the destination countries are ensured from a right-based approach. And number two, emphasized on mitigating the negative effect of, the inter of international migration health workers, particularly on countries who are experiencing already critical shortage of workforce. And thirdly, it, that code provides some sort of guidance and responsibilities of states and non-state actors with regard of recruiting health personnel, particularly from developing countries, which is now happening, and to promote st specific strategies for health system strengthening so that those countries from where they are migrating, they don't suffer from critical shortage. Another area is some international declarations and agreements, like the CFI, the CFI political declaration of World 
yeah, health workforce. That is last year, November 2013, while Indonesia was a part of that uh, declaration. And the key features of the declaration, and they have tried to link health workforce as a critical component to achieve universal health co coverage, and also government's role as steward role, a regulator's role. And also I emphasized uh, application of a WHO code of practice of international recruitment, and also encouraged and countries to have adequately budgeted and funded health workforce strategies and plans, along with uh, HRA's information systems, and also encourage equal opportunities of education, development, management, and career advancement of health workforce, health workers. And also they mentioned about the governance issue and health workforce distribution and retention issues. So these are the key features of a RCP political declarations. And following that, some countries took some actions, like Indonesia. Indonesia, they have identified two focus interventions, and they have reaffirmed, and they have conveyed that to the global forum. That one is actually to harmonize supply and demand of health workers in improving the quality of health workforce. Number two, to improve HRA's distribution and retention, particularly for remote areas. And they have already sent the written commitment that Indonesia will uh, take these two interventions as a priority, and they have initiated some activities in line with those two committed interventions. Some started, some are in plan, actually. And they are also committed to report back to a global forum within two years. Another coming issue is the mutual recognition arrangement, that is MRAs, in ASEAN region. There is a, there's a one community is coming up from 2015. And one of the five elements of ASEAN single market and production basis, free flow of skilled manpower among ASEAN countries. And, and this is going to be implemented from 2015. So the health, health workforce migration and related issues may become more crucial with the opening of this ASEAN economic community. Uh, so these are in brief my presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Dr. Shah Jahan for highlighting the big discrepancy in terms of the healthcare needs, the uh, burden of diseases, and also the availability of um, uh, physicians in the various countries, and also the, uh, the issues of international declaration on the uh, code of practice for human resource uh, employment and also movement. Yeah? although it may not be that um, effective in controlling the movement of doctors and also uh, nurses uh, in, 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 in the world. We have with us um, in this session also uh, Professor Lakono as a discussion. So I think uh, we'll have another uh, 15 minutes to go. I will give the floor now to uh, Prof. Lakono to give your views uh, after listening to the three uh, speakers. Prof. Lakono.